Hi everyone, Michelle from Energy and Balance. Thanks for joining me. Today we are going to be looking at three different glass tectites. Now if you don't know what a glass tectite is, a glass tectite is theorized that it's when a meteorite came down with such force, it hit the earth, caused an atomic explosion and fused the earth with the meteorite, creating a mixture of the two. And that's one of the reasons that it's such a fantastic protection stone. You are looking at something from outer space fused with something from Earth. And by combining the two, a lot of negative energies have an awful lot of trouble actually going through and fusing through these things. So a lot of people love them from the protection aspect. As well as that, it is higher self and connection with other beings, etc. through them. So those two things combined, and they really are stones of transformation and moving forward to where you want to be. So the three that we're going to look at today are, now I'm not going to go much into the details of each one individually. I'm going to be looking at and comparing how the three combine, how the three can work together, and um, just how they mesh so the first one I'm looking at is Moldavite. Now you can see with this piece of Moldavite I have here, um, this is, Moldavite is typically a nice green colour, okay? It doesn't have so much of a glassy look. It has usually a more of a soft, matted feel. And if you hold it in the palm of your hand like any of them, you'll be able to really get the energy from it and the feel of what it's like. Um, most people will recognize straight away if it's real Moldavite or if it's a fake piece of Moldavite because unfortunately there are a lot of fake Moldavites around. So always buy it from a trusted someone you trust. Okay. Now Moldavite came down in the Czech Republic and he came down 15 million years ago, thereabouts, give or take, um, causing that explosion and creating this beautiful stone for us. Now, the second one we're going to look at is Libyan Desert Glass. Now, you can see Libyan Desert Glass is this beautiful yellow colour. It can be a richer yellow. Um, not super, super, super rich, but it can be a nice, intense yellow. Um, it can be see-through, where you can see through it, or it can be matted with some inclusions. In fact, sometimes you can even get some that have the wonderful earth, the clay on the outside, and this slightly changes the vibration and just makes it a lot more earthier. So I always love seeing these guys. Um, they don't quite look as pretty, but they've got that gorgeous feel to them. Now, this guy came down, he's the oldest out of them, and he came down 29 million years ago. 29 million years ago in the, on the border of Libya and Egypt, where it is now. So it's found through the desert area there and the people there have known about him for, through recorded history. In fact, uh, one of the earliest uses of it was Tutankhamun and his breastplate, his burial breastplate actually has a scarab carved out of this to help protect him in the afterlife. So the people there knew all about it and knew just how wonderful it was to use for protection. Now the third one we're going to use is what I like to call a homegrown one because it comes from Australia and this is it. This is Darwin glass. Now not as much is known about Darwin glass because it's not as popular or common or easy to get as certainly Moldavite. Probably the easiest to get your hands on would be Moldavite and then you've got the Libyan desert glass and then the Darwin glass. Now Darwin glass is a relatively young one, came down 770,000 years ago and came down and impacted Tasmania. Now some pieces, the impact came down with such force that some pieces are actually found on the mainland of Australia. So it hit and scattered them right the way through. So those are the three we're talking about today. Brief history on them is what we've just got. Now let's look at it. I often get asked what's my favourite and I have to say that I do really love working with uh, Libyan Desert Glass. Libyan Desert Glass is, so that's the one I'm going to start with, Libyan Desert Glass is soft, it's feminine and it doesn't have the impact of Moldavite. 
It still does the same thing and works you through. It just does it in a gentle way. And for a lot of people, that's really, really appealing. Um, I find that Libyan Desert Glass works from the solar plexus down. So it creates all of that grounding, all of that feel good from the solar plexus. In fact, if you see me around at gem shows, etc., you will know that I quite regularly have my piece of Libyan Desert Glass sitting over my solar plexus because that's my favourite place for it. Um, I'm very often not without this little guy um, just because of the protection aspect it brings me as well as that self-confidence and that feel good to be able to connect and bring the information through as I need it. So the second one that I like to use and I like to use Moldavite and Libyan Desert Glass in combination. The reason I like to use them in combination is because I, as I've just explained Libyan Desert Glass is feminine and works from the solar plexus down whereas Moldavite is masculine and works from the heart up. So by combining the two you have an overall protection and bond you know an overall barrier that is created right the way through to just bring you through and really connect you and let bring through the information that you need to when you need it as well as protecting you at the same time so you need to be careful working with moldavite i say that just because a lot of people can be really affected by moldavite um Libyan Desert Glass is an affecting one as well. It just doesn't do it the same way. Moldavite has that impact. It sometimes, some people have referred it as like being hit with something because it's just such a strong force. Whereas once you're used to it, once you work through it, uh, it's then gentler. I don't have a problem. Some people um, can't have it in the room with them when they sleep. Uh, I have been using it and working with it for years and I don't usually sleep with any of my crystals on unless I choose to sleep with them for specific purposes but Moldavite it can go on the bed beside me it can be in the same room there's not a problem with it now um, I might specifically meditate with it but now I mainly use it for that protection aspect as well as that connection and channeling so those two I love to use together and I always work with them together, your masculine and your feminine, and just combining the two for the overall balance of them. Next is Darwin Glass. Darwin Glass is a relatively young one, and not a lot is known about Darwin Glass. So, when I've worked with it, and I have done quite a bit of study with it because there's nothing out there, I find that Darwin Glass is fantastic to meditate with. I don't wear it a lot I might carry it around with me occasionally when I feel the need but I like to meditate with it I find that it brings through a certain clarity I don't tend to use it with the other two um, as I feel it's more of the balance the in-between them so it's probably a really great one to start with if you're looking at using um, tectites of any type because it does have a softer more mellowed energy and a more of a balance rather than bringing the other two together to create that balance um, Darwin glass has a balance all of its own uh, I just find that you can be walking down the street and have it with you and suddenly there's that clarity of everything around you the trees suddenly look greener uh, every leaf is in perspective so it's when you want to bring through that and really see where you want to go and what you want to do. I love it. It's a great stone um, and I enjoy using all of them for their different reasons and working with them. So I hope this has helped to clear it up a little bit and give you a little bit more clarity on the three. All right. Have a fantastic day and look forward to doing this again. See ya. Bye.